call to worship comes to us this morning from Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together in worship wherever we are. Lord God, we pray that your presence be with us, that your spirit, O oh Lord, fill us, that you give us a fresh filling today, that Lord God, we would know that we have been in your presence. We ask you, O oh Lord, to anoint the word that is coming today, O oh God, that it would come forth as you would have it. And we pray for all of those who are gathered to hear it. We thank you for being able to reach far and near by technology in these times of sheltering in place. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you continue, hallelujah, God, to just bless your church. Lord God, let your name be proclaimed in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, welcome, friends. We are so pleased that you are joining us today from wherever you are. I am Dr. Rhonda Britton, the pastor of New Horizons Baptist Church in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And New Horizons, we believe we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And our prayer is that after you worship with us today, yea, even during the worship, you will feel some of that empowering strength. We thank you for tuning in and we want to welcome all of our AUBA churches from over the province and our churches in the neighborhood who tune in to hear the message today. We thank you for being friends of New Horizons and we pray that you continue to pray for us as we continue with the renovation of our building. Be, be blessed today by the praise team who will now lead us in another song of worship.
Christian friends, and we are so pleased whenever we're able to give a gift back to the Lord. God blesses us and asks us to give just a portion of that with which God has blessed us. And so we bring our tithes and our offerings with generous hearts and cheerful spirits. The word of God says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Lord God, now as we uh, offer our gifts to you, we pray, God, that you bless the gifts, oh God, that Lord, you teach us how to give, that you give us uh, the right spirit, oh Lord, so that we give freely with our whole hearts. Hallelujah, God, we give in gratitude to you, knowing that everything we have comes from you. And so we offer it back, oh Lord, and we pray that it may be used to the building of your kingdom here on earth. Multiply these gifts, oh God, bless the gift and the giver. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, amen.
Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of Manoah, the city of the great King. Father, we're grateful and thankful this morning that you call us again to this place to give you praise and give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is still sufficient for every need that we face. And in these days in which we're living, Lord, we thank you that you are more than sufficient. Thank you for your strength, your grace that you give to all your people. But especially, Lord, I thank you this morning for New Horizons. I thank you, Lord, and pray that these, my brothers and sisters in this congregation, will be filled with knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. But each one of us, Lord, by your grace, will walk worthy of you, Lord, pleasing you and being fruitful in every good work and increase the knowledge of you, God. Lord, strengthen us with might by your glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. As we give you thanks, Father, you have made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You have delivered us, Lord, and we thank you from the power of darkness and have conveyed us into the kingdom of your Son of your love. We know in whom we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins. And so, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the Lord that will be spoken this morning. We trust there will be open hearts to hear, minds to receive, and wills to do. We pray God the Word will bless those who have not heard the good news, that there will be something said, something this day, Lord, that will cause their hearts to be challenged, that will cause their hearts to realize there's a God who came, who gave himself, who loves them with an everlasting love and wants them to know that for themselves. And so we thank you for the message of salvation today. We trust that we were here. We also thank you, Lord, for this pandemic. And we ask God in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you stop it, that you cease it from continuing, Lord. Because, Lord, I believe, Father, it is hindering in many ways the purposes of God in getting the good news of salvation out to a whole world. As you gave us a commandment to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I know it's going forth through this electronic means, but God, there are places today that need that individual witness, that need that personal witness. And so we pray that this pandemic would stop, Lord, and people who have been in, I'm not sure how to say this, Lord, but I just pray for those who have been affected. We're all affected, but those who have lost loved ones in death, those who have, those that are still fighting to get over this pandemic, we pray, God, your grace and strength them. We thank you, Lord, that you care about the souls of mankind and you care about what's happening every nation, every people with this pandemic. And so, our Father, we don't cease not to give you many thanks for you, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, God, you give to your church throughout this community and throughout the world, every believer, the knowledge of your wisdom. May our understanding be enlightened and may we continue to hold on to the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Lord, I believe that the things we're seeing, we pray you prepare your people for your soon coming, Lord. I believe, Lord, that you're going to come and call us out of here soon to be with yourself. And in the meantime, Lord, help us to be true, help us to be patient, help us to be steadfast and unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Help us to be gracious to one another. And Lord, in this pandemic, as difficult as it is, help us to, the world to see that you said, by this shall all men know we are your disciples when we have loved one to another, Lord. May that be seen in every community that names the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we bless you. We thank you for the privilege and the joy that is ours to be here and to thank you this day in the wonderful name of him who called us from darkness into his marvelous light, who loves us with an everlasting love, and will never leave us nor forsake us, even our Lord Jesus Christ. And in this we thank you. Amen. And in Jesus' name, praise God. The word of the Lord comes to us today from John chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. 
Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Consider this text and meditate with me for a few moments on the thought, do you know who he is? Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we invite you to open up this word to our understanding. And we are grateful, God, that you care enough to send us a word. We stand on your truth that says, when it goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so, Lord, now let me decrease so that you would increase and the word come forth as you would have it. Aim true today. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is the story of the man who was born blind. Jesus and his disciples encounter this man one day, and then Jesus heals the man. Jesus makes some mud from saliva and dirt and rubs it on the man's eyes. Think about it for a moment. Human beings were created, supernaturally made from the dirt. It's a logical spiritual tool for the Lord to use to heal us. The mud symbolizes the creation. Jesus then sends the man to the pool of Siloam to wash his eyes. So the man obeys and he goes to wash. The washing symbolizes baptism. First, mud for creation and water for cleansing. This man is being remade. He is being made new. And he comes back from uh, seeing, he comes back from washing, seeing for the first time in his life because he was born blind. Now, everyone is not happy about the man's healing. The miracle is challenged by the religious leaders of the day. The Pharisees demand to know who healed him. And when he tells them, they do not believe. They are the learned, the teachers, the ones who have been entrusted to lead and teach God's people. But they are so full of themselves and have such a high regard for themselves that they cannot see God using anyone but them to do God's will and work in the world. And that is a lesson for us all. God can use whomever God pleases. God may present God's self in any form and we should be praying for discernment so that we might see. The story makes several key points. The one to focus on today is the responsibility and accountability we each have. To heal the breach between sinful man and holy God, God took on flesh and was born into the world as a male child who was named Jesus. Jesus walked among us and gave us glimpses of the kingdom. Jesus used metaphor and parables to teach us who we are as children of the kingdom. He came so that we could have abundant life. He came to show us what it will be like to live in community with God. He came so that we can claim our inheritance in God. God incarnate in Jesus worked all manner of miracles, going about exhibiting his great power, not to gain fame or fortune, but to teach humankind that God loves us and God does not desire for us to suffer under the tyranny of Satan. Jesus taught that we have freedom in God. We are not to be bound by rules and rituals and religious practices. God created us to be free to worship and appreciate and love God and neighbor as God loves us. God created us for relationship. This is something you hear me tell you all the time. I remind you all the time, God created us for relationship. In light of this revelation of God in Jesus, we are called to receive the good news 
and to spread the good news. We are called to live our lives in the light of God's truth so that we can fully experience the love and joy that God intends for us. We cannot hear the truth and simply return to life as usual. The blind man said, I once was blind, but now I see. There's no way to have an encounter with the living Lord and not be changed. If you are not changed, you have not yet seen the Lord. That is the gist of this encounter that Jesus has with the Pharisees in this story. They are blind guides. They are supposed to be the leaders and the teachers, but they cannot see. The story is, forced, is focused on the healing of a man with a physical blindness, but Jesus uses the man's physical blindness as an opportunity to teach about spiritual blindness. Though the man in the story is physically blind, he has greater insight than those around him who have their physical sight. This man has been in physical darkness all his life, but in that physical darkness, he can see the light of Jesus. He trusted enough to obey and to wash. And when Jesus told him who he was, Despite the rantings of the Pharisees, the man believed. I just stand to remind you today to please try with all your might not to be like the Pharisees in this story who claim to represent the Lord, but at the end of the day did not know who he is. The man who was born blind was born with that physical blindness, but the Pharisees were walking around in spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness is a condition not of the eyes, but of the heart. The Pharisees hardened their hearts against Jesus. They did not want to see any other way except their way. They were happy with the revelation that they had in God and did not want to hear of any new revelation. They did not want any greater understanding. They did not want any explanation of the word of God or the laws that God had given or any way that God had taught us as people to live. And this is the state of affairs for some in our world today. We are in the days when people have become lovers of themselves. Everyone wants to do what is right in their own eyes and no longer want to hear from the Lord. The Lord asked the man who was born blind, do you believe in the son of man? And the man born blind said, who is he, sir? Jesus said, you're talking to him. You're talking to him. The man born blind is never identified with a name in the story because he is each of us. We are all born blind. We are born without knowing the truth of Jesus. We are born with the stain of sin, but we do not have to stay that way. That's your shout cue. Hallelujah. We do not have to stay that way. Jesus has redeemed us so that sin no longer has a grip on us. We can be made new. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus offers us redemption by his blood on Calvary's cross and illumination by his spirit that he freely gives to us when we receive his salvation. We can know the truth <laughs> and the truth can set us free. Do not let it be said that you came to church week after week. And I've said this often, week after week, showing up at church and still not know Jesus. Do not let it be said that you heard God's truth and yet it did not penetrate your heart. Do not let it be said that when Jesus showed you great works of power, delivered you over and over again from the traps and snares of the enemy, restored you when your heart and spirit were broken, protected you from dangers seen and unseen, spoke peace to your heart in the time of a storm, brought your loved ones 
home to you every day and gave you comfort when they passed from this life, put food on your table and clothes on your back and provided you with a roof over your head and even put a little jangle in your pocket. Do not let it be said that after all the Lord has done for you, that you still do not know who he is. Do you know who he is today, church? He is the God who created from nothing all that is. Do you know who he is? He is the God who shaped humankind from the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of life. Do you know that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you know who he is? He is the great I am, the first, the last, and the living one. Do you know who he is? He is the bread of life, the good shepherd, and the true vine. <laughs> Do you know who he is? He is the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. Do you know that he is the door of the sheep, that he is the resurrection and the life? Do you know he is the one who justified us and whose spirit continually works to sanctify us? Do not let it be said that you sat under the teaching of this pastor or that pastor, and yet you did not realize who Jesus is. Do you know he is the one who brings salvation to all humankind? His name is Jesus. Jesus is the one who makes a way out of no way. He is the faithful and true witness. Jesus is the burden bearer and the heavy load sharer. Jesus is the one who says, come unto me, all you who are burdened down, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you know, church, that he is your refuge and your strength and ever-present help? in trouble. <laughs> he is the lion <laughs> of the tribe of Judah, the great physician and the everlasting God. <laughs> Do you know he is the one uh, who has called us out, uh, called the Ecclesia, his church, to proclaim the word and to be his witnesses in the world. He is the lamb who was slain, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, Jesus is his name. There is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Jesus is the one who came into the world not to condemn us, but to save us. Jesus is the one who redeemed us by his blood. Jesus is the one who sacrificed himself on Calvary's cross. Jesus is the one who suffered, bled, and died so that we could live. Jesus is the one who has opened up the kingdom to us, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. The man asked, who is he? And Jesus answered, he is the one speaking with you. And the man said, I believe. Open the eyes of your heart, church, so that you may see. Take off the blinders. Do you know who he is? Amen. Lord God, now in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for this word and we pray, Lord God, that it reaches the hearts of your people. And if there is one, O oh Lord, who does not yet know who you are, speak to them right now that they may give their hearts and their lives to you. Draw unto yourself, O oh God. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. Increase your kingdom in the places of your dominion, Lord. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.